silence all rise. <coughs> The Supreme Court of Queensland is in session. Any person having business before the court, come forward, announce your presence, and you will be heard. Please be seated. This ceremony, of course, is to welcome Justice Declan Kelly as the newest member of the trial division of the Supreme Court. His Honour took his oaths of office and allegiance last Monday um, in a private ceremony so that he could hurry off and sit in applications. I'll ask that the Commission appointing him be read to the court. Elizabeth II, by the grace of God, Queen of Australia and her other realms and territories, Head of the Commonwealth. To our trusty and well-beloved Declan Anthony Kelly, Queen's Counsel, Barrister of Laws, uh, Bachelor of Laws, Barrister. Greeting, whereas His Excellency the Governor in and over our State of Queensland in the Commonwealth of Australia, with the advice of the Executive Council of our said State, has seen fit to direct that you, Declan Anthony Kelly, Queen's Counsel, being a Barrister of the Supreme Court of our said State, of at least five years' standing, and one of our counsel learned in the law, shall be appointed a judge of the Supreme Court. Now know you that we, reposing full trust and confidence in your loyalty, learning, integrity and ability, do hereby, in pursuance of the Constitution of Queensland 2001, and in exercise of all powers and authorities enabling us in that behalf, appoint you the said Declan Anthony Kelly, Queen's Counsel, being a barrister of the Supreme Court of such standing as aforesaid, to be a judge of the Supreme Court of our said state on and from the 6th day of September 2021, to have, hold, exercise and enjoy the said office during good behaviour, together with all the rights, profits, powers, privileges and advantages thereunto belonging or appertaining, in testimony whereof, we have caused the public seal of our said state to be hereunto affixed. Witness, our trusty and well-beloved His Excellency, the Honourable Paul de Jersey, Companion of the Order of Australia, Commander of the Royal Victorian Order, Governor in and over the State of Queensland and its dependencies, in the Commonwealth of Australia at Croydon, this second day of September, in the year of our Lord, 2021 and in the 70th year of our reign by command. Entered on record by me in the Register of Patents, number 52, page 61, this second day of September AD 2021, Clerk of the Executive Council. Well, I don't know if it's the luck of the Irish, Justice Kelly, but I'm very glad we're not holding this ceremony in lockdown conditions, which has looked like a real risk lately. Um, as it is, we are able to have a relatively full court subject to mask wearing, although the numbers wanting to attend means that we also have an overflow court. It's all been at rather short notice, so there are some judges, Justices Fraser, North, Henry and Flanagan, who are unable to attend, uh, but they send their apologies and wish to be associated with my remarks. We also have apologies from Chief Justice Kiefel and Justice Keane of the High Court, but I'm very pleased that Justice Edelman of that court has been able to join us. Justice Crowe joins us by video link from Rockhampton, 
and the ceremony is also being streamed to Cairns, Townsville and to Woomba, where the Chief Judge is in attendance. I note that almost all of the judges of the Federal Court are present, are as some of the judges of the Federal Circuit and Family Court of Australia, Divisions 1 and 2, judges of the District Court, uh, Vice President O'Connor of the Industrial Court and the Chief Magistrate. There are a number of past judges present and a judge of the future, Dr Melifont QC, whose commission takes effect from the 4th of October. At the bar table, I acknowledge the Attorney General, Mr Thompson, the Solicitor General, Mr Sullivan, the President of the Bar Association, and Ms Shearer, the President of the Law Society. In the audience, we welcome the Shadow Attorney General, Mr Nichols, the Director General of the Department of Justice, Mr Mackey, and many other distinguished guests, members of the profession and members of the public. But most importantly of all, we welcome to the court His Honour's family, uh, who now become part of the court family, Justice Kelly's wife, Dr Sarah Kelly, his daughter Lauren and his sons Riley, Jack and Griffin. It's a great pleasure to have in attendance also his honest father, Mr Anthony Kelly, his brother, Mr Liam Kelly QC, who's well known to all of us, his sister-in-law, Mrs Ann Kelly, and his nephew, Joe Kelly, as well as, by uh, video link, uh, his sisters, Dr Michaela Hegarty, and Dr. Gabriel Layton, the latter from California. Justice Kelly, you've clearly led a very quiet and private life because when I asked my research assistant to see what she could find out about you, she came back with half a page <laughs> and three pages of your wife's accomplishments. <laughs> However, I can say that you had a stellar academic career which included first-class honours and a university medal in law. I wondered if that suggested a little sibling competitiveness because your older brother had already got one. But there were few clues in your resume uh, of personal failings of any kind. <laughs> I was searching. You went to Oxford on a scholarship. You completed a Bachelor of Civil Law, again with first-class honours. You had some time at Faze Ruthening, but you commenced practice at the bar in late 1994 and 13 years later were appointed Silk. You combined a busy commercial practice at trial and appellate level with briefs to appear in a number of commissions of inquiry. You've also had a commercial arbitration practice with chambers in Singapore. So this week's foray into the unfamiliar world of bail applications must have been quite <laughs> exciting for you. <laughs> Among the demands of practice, you've provided service to the profession as chair of the Bar's CPD committee and for a decade as a member of the Incorporated Council of Law Reporting, who will no doubt struggle to replace you. There's no doubt from your academic and professional record that you bring a very high level of intellectual power and legal ability to this court. That's wonderful and we are very glad of it but I think at least equally important are your personal traits, which I have observed and others confirm. Notably, you're unfailingly calm, civil and succinct, with a degree of modesty and humility, which are, how shall I put this, uh, not so very common among members of the bar. <laughs> Those qualities promise a very fine judicial temperament. One of your new colleagues also wanted it pointed out that you have substantially increased the average height of the judges. <laughs> <laughs> More seriously, Justice Kelly, you have all the hallmarks of an excellent judge. The members of the court are delighted that you have joined their ranks and we all look forward to working with you as our colleague. Attorney General. May it please the court. Can I start by respectfully acknowledging the traditional owners of the land on which we meet today, the Turrbal and Yuggera people, and pay my respects to elders past, present and emerging. Can I echo the acknowledgements made um, by Her Honour the Chief Justice and extend my welcome to the judicial officers, representatives and members of the legal profession, and of course the family and friends of the Honourable Justice Kelly. <coughs> 
It's my absolute pleasure to join you all here today in my role as Attorney General as we welcome Queensland's newest judge to the trial division of the Supreme Court of Queensland, His Honour Justice Declan Kelly QC. Your Honour has developed an impressive uh, reputation amongst the bench and the bar as being a top legal mind in your areas of expertise, fueling a strong commercial practice in both state and federal courts on behalf of corporate, government and private clients. As a barrister, solicitors and opponents alike know you for your dedication to every case, your commitment to your clients, your ability to work through matters and deal with the key issues of each case, and sharing your passion for sport, especially AFL and rugby league. While the Bar Association's loss is the Supreme Court's gain, I'm told that I owe a special apology to Your Honour's brother and Chamber's colleague, Liam, who will sorely miss your presence and therapeutic debriefs every day. Your Honour graduated from the University of Queensland with first class honours, receiving a university medal in law for achieving outstanding academic results. Your Honour was also presented with the J.H. Wilkinson Memorial Prize in law for students with the highest results in law courses taken over the program. In 1993, Your Honour's efforts were rewarded with a Shevening Scholarship, uh, and I note with some interest that the Shevening Scholarship alumni include not only a former Chief Justice of Sri Lanka, Prime Ministers of Iceland, Bulgaria and Poland, authors, fashion designers and artists, and Queensland's very own Premier Anastasia Palaszczuk MP, so Your Honour is in very good company. Your Honour began your extensive legal career as a law clerk at Faze Ruthening, as an article clerk, Your Honour often had a lectern on your desk to assist with reading files, and I'm told that while you did use it to read files on occasion, the lectern was primarily used to read Rugby League Week, unbeknownst <laughs> to the partners in your office. It came as no surprise that you were called to the bar and commenced practice as a barrister in 1994. You were later appointed as Queen's Counsel in 2007. In your commercial practice, Your Honour gained experience in a wide range of legal areas, including the fields of commercial, equity, trade practices, building and construction, and banking and finance. You displayed a strong appetite for appellate matters, highlighting the breadth of your experience in the superior courts at state and federal level. You have also experience in commissions of inquiry, having represented clients in the Paradise Dam Commission of Inquiry, and the Royal Commission into Misconduct into the Banking, Superannuation and Financial Services Industry. In the last 10 years, Your Honour has undertaken voluntary work as a member of the Incorporated Council of Law Reporting for the State of Queensland, which publishes the reported key decisions of the Supreme Court. And no doubt you will be pleased to continue making a contribution to law reporting in Queensland, albeit now from the bench. In your personal life, Your Honour has been a role model for your four children, Lauren, Riley, Jack and Griffin, and I'm told by sources close to you that both you and your wife Sarah took on very active roles in the children's upbringing and you were often kept busy ferrying them around to extracurricular activities. And to that end, I understand that Your Honour developed a kind of mobile chambers in your car where you would wait to pick up one of your children from training while parked near a track or training facility, while writing submissions for the next day in court or completing an urgent advice. You and your wife, Sarah, have displayed great teamwork over the years in accomplishing all that you have, both personally and professionally. This industrious work ethic will continue to hold your honour in good stead with an undoubted ability to manage caseloads, be decisive and deliver timely judgments. Strong communication skills complemented by courtesy, decency, compassion, and the ability to show humility are qualities that underpin a good judicial officer and a good person. Your Honour has displayed all of these attributes and I wish Your Honour every success in your new role as you administer justice for the people of this great state of Queensland. May it please the court. Mr Solicitor General. Mr Sullivan. May it please the court. On behalf of the Bar Association of Queensland, it gives me great pleasure to congratulate you on the occasion of this welcome ceremony for your honour, Justice Declan Kelly, QC. Justice Kelly, I extend particular welcome to your wife, Sarah, your children, Lauren, Riley, Jack and Griffin, your father, Tony Kelly, your brother, Liam Kelly, QC, and other members of your family who have been able to join us here today, both in person and on video link. 
Your Honour joins the court following a distinguished career at the bar. Your Honour was called the bar in 1993 and began practice in September 1994. You took silk in 2007. Well before those days, Your Honour had achieved an impressive academic record, as we have heard. You were, were awarded a first class degree in your Bachelor of Laws at the University of Queensland with a further award of the University of Medal. My recollection is that Your Honour topped the year. Your Honour was then awarded a British Foreign Office Scholarship to Oxford, where you read for the BCL at Merton College. Your Honour took a first in the BCL. This was particularly impressive, given the course was populated by first-class graduates from around the world. The early promise of those academic achievements matured into Your Honour's fine career at the bar. The breadth of Your Honour's commercial practice included your work in commercial law, arbitration, equity administration, uh, law, trade practices and building construction. With Liam, who was also your chambermate, the Kelly brothers forged a reputation as leaders at the commercial bar. All of this is well known. However, I would like to take the opportunity to reflect on some of the aspects of your character which have marked you out at the bar. You have a reputation for integrity and honesty. During the course of a case, when your honour reached an agreement or a concession or understanding with an opponent, your word was always your bond. It was a trait which was greatly valued by those against whom you appeared. The undertaking of litigation can be a long and arduous process, not just for uh, counsel, but also for the bench. Judges look to practitioners to conduct themselves courteously and appropriately. Your Honour stood out as a beacon in this respect. Your respectfulness to the bench was unfailing. Whilst Your Honour may not have appreciated this, the way you conducted yourself in court has stood out as an example to others, particularly junior members of the bar. Because of your academic ability and success at the bar, Your Honour could have kept only to the large, lucrative commercial cases with the big firms. However, that is not the course that Your Honour chose. You have always been an ardent follower of the cab rank rule in the best traditions of the bar. This has meant that you provided services to clients and to smaller firms who otherwise may have lacked the resources to take up the fight. Finally, I could not let the moment pass without acknowledging Your Honour's sense of humour and goodwill. No matter how hard the case was fought, immediately afterwards, Your Honour would make a joke or an aside and break the tension. All of these things speak to your good nature, honesty and integrity. It should be acknowledged that these characteristics were forged at an early, at an early age by the example of your parents. Your father and your late mother provided a loving home where all the children were allowed to excel. Liam was a Rhodes Scholar. Um, one of your older sisters um, graduated as a medical doctor. Your other older sister graduated with a PhD in aerospace science. Your parents' ethos that was that one should always give back to the community. An example of this was your father's many years of voluntary work for the St Vincent de Paul Society. Your Honour and your wife Sarah, who has always been your equal and partner in all things, have provided a similar loving home for your four children, all of whom your Honour is rightly proud of. Lest it be thought that your honour is all ice cream and apple pie, I should note there is a Mr Hyde to your Dr Jekyll. Putting your honour on any sporting field of any sort results in the Irish coming out. <laughs> your honour played AFL football at a high level, representing the University of Queensland. I'm informed you were generally known as the street marchers and pencil pushers, but your honour took that on the chin. More importantly, you also played in the law faculty interfaculty competition. Uh, Liam and yourself were the star players in the law team, largely due to the fact that no one else had ever played the game. <laughs> it was <clears throat> in one such game that your powers of advocacy first came, became apparent to your classmates. During the game, the medical students, as they were wont to do, lodged a complaint with the umpires that the law students had 22 players on the field instead of the required 18. In an astute application of the maxim, he who seeks equity must do equity, 
you pointed out to the umpires that as the medical students had 25 players in the field, they could not really be heard to complain. <laughs> your honour submission was accepted and your course was set to the bar. The bar and its members extend to you and your family their best wishes on this well-deserved appointment. We are confident that your honour will fulfil this new challenge with the same enthusiasm and dedication that you have demonstrated in practice and assure your honour of the ongoing support of the bar. May it please the court. May it please the court. I'm privileged to be here today on behalf of the solicitors of Queensland to welcome your honour to your new role on the bench. The people of Queensland are indeed well served when a leading practitioner at the peak of their career is willing to take on the yoke of public service by accepting a commission as a judge of this court. Of course, appointment to the bench is recognition of an outstanding commitment and achievement as a legal practitioner. It's a moment to take satisfaction in past achievements and a time for celebration and pride for family and friends. <coughs> but it's also a solemn occasion because it marks the beginning of a new call to service for the judge appointed. It's a call that requires the judge to muster all the power of their intellect, all their wisdom, all their compassionate understanding of the human condition and all their humility in fidelity to the service of the administration of justice. And today we can be confident that your honour is very well equipped to answer this call to service. As we've heard, the power of your intellect is recognised by the awarding of the University Medal, honed by your studies at Oxford and has been demonstrated ever since by your successful career at the bar. You have rich experience of life outside the law in family and community. Your friends report that you worked from home long before others did and very long before it was enforced by COVID. You did this so that you could be a fully involved parent to your four children and so that both you and Sarah could pursue the careers that realised your collective and prodigious talents. While a private person and never the life of the party, I'm told you're always the person who laughs the loudest and are known for your warmth and genuine interest in others. And although not noted on your CV, your achievements have extended to the sporting field where you've demonstrated considerable talent and if your talent was lacking but the team needed you anyway, you demonstrated bravery and determination. All of these are the components of a life of generosity, balance and the accretion of wisdom. You're known to be a humble person who when the spotlight shines on you quickly seeks to divert attention elsewhere. Your considerable acts of charity and compassion are not trumpeted. To the public, it can seem odd to talk of the quality of humility as an important quality in a judge. But the humble, respectful and patient exercise of judicial power is essential to public respect for the rule of law. It also makes legal practitioners who appear before you much less anxious. Among solicitors, your honour has been well known for your calm demeanour, your collegiality and your compassion. In particular, you've been known for the respectful manner in which you've treated all the people with whom you deal during a matter, whether with you or against you. Your instructing solicitors have consistently appreciated your honour's capacity to make their job easier by your professional courtesy and guidance and by providing a good description of what you required in a brief. This clarity about what you require will be prized by those appearing before you in court and will no doubt speed the wheels of justice. Those who've known you from a young age speak of you holding positions of leadership, not because you relentlessly sought them out, but because those around you simply recognised the combination of intellect and personal qualities that made you someone they wanted to follow. There was something inevitable about you taking on those roles. In the same way, a review of your honours CV and your professional achievements may make it seem that your appointment to the bench was inevitable. But of course, it was not inevitable. It depended on you being prepared to step in to this life of service. For your willingness to do this, the solicitors of Queensland thank you. You have our support and we wish you well in your time on the court. May it please the court. Justice Kelly. Thank you, Chief Justice, Attorney, 
Mr. Sullivan and Ms. Shearer for your very generous and kind words. Thank you everyone who is present here today for taking time out of your busy lives to honour the court by your attendance. I would like to congratulate my colleague, Dr. Kerry Mellifont, on her appointment to this court, and I look forward to working with her as a colleague from the 4th of October 2021. Attorney, I'm very grateful for the confidence and trust that you have shown in me by nominating me for appointment to the court. Mr. Sullivan, I have great respect and admiration for the Queensland Bar. In my 27 years as a barrister, I was always very proud to call myself a member of the Queensland Bar. In that time, our bar has included some of the great leaders of the profession in the nation. I was lucky enough to have had the chance from time to time to work with some of those great leaders. But I also want to importantly acknowledge the many leaders amongst the current ranks of the Queensland Bar who regularly run difficult cases with integrity professionalism and courage. I've been very thankful and grateful, I should say, to receive messages of congratulations from a large number of barristers, but although I was really happy to receive those messages, I've been struck by just how many of you have rung me to say congratulations, but then with what I regard as unseemly haste to ask, how old, how old are you, by the way? <laughs> <laughs> and it certainly brought me tumbling back to earth to realise that quite a few of you out there are sort of already trying to mentally calculate just for how long you have to put up with me. <laughs> Could I say something very briefly about collegiality? My whole career at the bar has benefited from generosity and kindness shown to me by senior members of the bar. And if you would indulge me very briefly, I'll give some examples. Prior to my admission, Marshall Cook QC allowed me to undertake work experience out of his chambers. Marshall later recommended me for my brief, my first brief, effectively sight unseen. This was a wonderful, trusting gesture from a very senior member of the bar. Unfortunately, it didn't end very well because I drafted a pleading that was struck out as disclosing <laughs> no reasonable cause of action. And then... <laughs> but it got a lot worse because as a result of what I still regard as a very, very questionable call by a sub-editor, the case made its way into the Queensland reports <laughs> as my first reported case. <laughs> and just to save my former chamber colleague some time when you get back to chambers, the case is 1998-1 Queensland reports <laughs> 26. The late and great Honourable John Muir, when he was a QC, at the very height of his powers and an absolute giant of the bar, somehow became aware that I had recently commenced practice and occupied a very small room at the other end of his floor. And I believe for no other reason than pity, he managed to have me retained as a, his junior in a two-week trial, which was a massive thing for a junior back in those days of the two-thirds rule. And for two weeks, I was able to watch this truly remarkable silk perform to the very high standards and although I was contributing very little to the case, John treated me as an equal and with unfailing respect and courtesy and good humour. And as we know, that was the way that John treated everybody in practice. And I'm absolutely delighted that Mrs Sandra Muir is in attendance today, and I want to thank her and in his absence, John, for their support and friendship to Sarah and myself since the time that I commenced practice at the bar. The Honourable Justice Peter Applegarth, when I had been admitted to practice but was about to leave for overseas for a year's study and before I'd even commenced practice, offered me the chance to devil an opinion for him. I produced a draft for him and, and then promptly flew out of the country. My recollection of that draft is that it might be accurately described in the words of Justice, His Honour Justice John Bond as fairly light on. <laughs> but, but I did the right thing by Peter and I didn't submit a devilling fee note and I promptly forgot about the matter. Um, many months later I remember being in England on a very dark, miserable winter's day and my primary concern was how I was going to pay my next British telecom phone bill because I'd been speaking to Sarah a lot. And I was walking into college to find a letter from Peter enclosing a very overly generous cheque for the devil and a copy of his opinion, which, as I recall, bore very little resemblance to my draft. <laughs> but that cheque made for a very happy Christmas and really sums up Peter's generous spirit. 
The Honourable Donna O'Reilly spent a great deal of time teaching me how to prepare for and run trials, and in particular to prepare cross-examination. Um, she was a great teacher and a very generous mentor to her juniors. I want to acknowledge the presence here today of Mr John Gallagher QC, who has recently retired from the bar after a career spanning 57 years, including 39 years as a silk. John, thank you for making the cases we did together extremely enjoyable. I'm grateful for all the moments of good humour, hospitality from you and Susan, and for all of your advice and support. Working with John as his junior was a wonderful experience. John would ask you to be his junior in a resumption case, and in the course of preparing, you would learn a great deal about the law of compensation and valuation, but you would learn even more about specific battles fought on particular islands during the war in the Pacific. <laughs> you would learn about the history of feuds at the Queensland Bar in the 1970s. You would learn about what to do in Paris if you ever happened to be able to live there for six weeks in a row. <laughs> and one of John's favourite topics, you would learn how to cope with stress at the bar. But the only problem I ever had with John's advice about how to cope with stress at the bar is that it always tended to involve regular overseas travel and it always seemed to be premised on the quite incorrect assumption that I was loaded and had plenty of disposable <laughs> coin. <laughs> I want to thank all of the silks I worked with and all the silks I've appeared against. Sometimes it didn't seem that enjoyable at the time, but on reflection, the most special memories I will take from the bar are of running some hard cases against great opponents. I do want to thank all my juniors who worked so hard in my cases and who produced such high quality work under a significant pressure. And to those of you who worked with me, with me as my junior, I want to reflect upon two important things. Um, firstly, robe tugging and secondly, post-it notes. <laughs> um, as a junior, reflecting on my career, I don't think as a junior I was ever what might be described as a robe tugger. <laughs> but as a silk, I had my robes tugged a lot. <laughs> and I didn't really mind having my robe tugged. I didn't mind that. But I do think it's important that if, you, if you're going to go for the robe tug, try and back it up with a post-it note that's actually legible. <laughs> and pe people have asked me a lot over the last few days, you know, what, what prompted the decision. And I've been deflecting that just with what I think is the usual response of just saying, I just didn't know how many trials I had left in me. But to be quite sincere, it probably dawned on me that I should be seriously considering a move when, with increasing regularity, some of the really key, powerful and important points in my cases started to emerge as a result of robe target tugging and post-it notes. <laughs> I personally believe that there is an absolute tidal wave of talent emerging from the junior ranks in the Queensland Bar, and I look forward to watching the bar go from strength to strength in this great state. I should briefly some, say something to my former chamber colleagues at Jared Brennan Chambers. I started practice as a barrister in a chambers on level 17 of the MLC on the very day that the Honourable George Freiberg, who was then the head of the chambers, announced that he was leaving the group to become a judge of this court. After the announcement, George invited me into his room to have a cup of tea, which I should stress was the first time I'd actually met him. <laughs> as we drank our tea, George explained to me that he regarded it as his solemn and strict duty to reserve the hardest treatment in court for his former chamber colleagues. <laughs> and to my utter dismay, he added that because I joined the group that day, I would be included within the group. <laughs> to my Former Chamber colleagues, if anything goes awry in court in our dealings, I'll just say two things. First, as far as I am concerned, I will just be performing my solemn and strict duty. <laughs> and secondly, when you go back to Chambers and before you unleash, just remember I'm in regular contact with Liam. <laughs> um, Ms Shearer, I want to acknowledge all of the solicitors I've had the privilege of working alongside throughout my career. I very much believe that in litigation there are separate and equally important roles to be performed by barristers and solicitors. In the most difficult of matters, the role of the solicitor is particularly important in undertaking the onerous but vitally important task of disclosure and also in dealing in what I might call the real world with the needs of the client. In my career I work with solicitors from all types of firms and I benefited greatly in my practice from being able to work with many solicitors who continually brought great honour to our profession. I want to thank all of those solicitors who trusted me with their briefs, and I'm grateful for their loyalty shown to me throughout my career. 
to my family, my father, Anthony, who's here today, my mother, Marianne, passed away in 2012. My parents sacrificed a great deal to provide all of their children with the best available education and to maximise our opportunities in life. Dad, I was thinking that about 27 years ago, you bought me my first suit, you bought me my wig and gown, you painted my chambers, and you helped me move the furniture in. I'll always remember what you did for me at the start of my career at the bar, and I'll, I will always remember how special it was to drive into work with you this morning and for you to visit my new chambers. Perhaps most importantly, I grew up in a family in which I always knew that I was loved unconditionally by my parents. And then I always had in the background this enormous force of nature, my maternal grandmother, Kathleen Knight, who also loved her grandchildren and great-grandchildren unconditionally, and who was the volunteer manager of the Stafford Mills on Wheels Centre until the age of 90. I would also like to acknowledge my parents-in-law, Clive Kitchen, and the late Yvonne Kitchen, and my brother-in-law, Sam Kitchen, and his wife, Liesl, for their love and support. To my three siblings, Michaela, Gabriel, and Liam, I want to thank you for everything you've done for me. And I must say, being the youngest of four, uh, having you three go before me has been an absolute rails run for me. I couldn't have asked for better siblings. To Liam, Anne, and Joe, Liam, people say we sound alike. And before I lost all my hair, they used to say we looked alike. <laughs> and at the bar, and amongst lawyers, particularly solicitors, people used to regularly call me Liam and you Declan. And I was always completely relaxed about that. But sometimes I felt that you were a little bit too quick to correct them when you... <laughs> <laughs> but, but I haven't ever felt it necessary to correct anyone when they have mistaken me for you. I'm absolutely delighted to be mistaken for you. But you should know that I've also felt it unnecessary from time to time to correct people when they would refer to me as being a Rhodes Scholar or as the, or as the ducks of our school. <laughs> I simply took the view that it was just better to let all that stuff slide. <laughs> and perhaps if they start calling you judge, you should also just let that stuff slide. <laughs> I've had a ringside seat watching your career watching how hard you work and watching how strenu strenuously you advance the interests of your clients whilst all the while observing the duty to the court. When I said earlier that I'm very proud of the Queensland Bar, one of the reasons why I am so proud of the Queensland Bar is because you are a leader of it. To our children, Lauren, Riley, Jack and Griffin, Mum and I are extremely proud of each of you and I'm glad that after all these years you get to see where I work. Thanks for putting up with all the car trips into school when I was in a trial or appeal when the steering wheel was being gripped tight and I was distracted and, as you would say, very short on conversation. <laughs> I'm hoping that the days of gripping the steering wheel tight are now behind me, but I can't guarantee anything that, about conversation improving simply because I'm a judge. <laughs> to my wife, Sarah, thank you for your love and support and for encouraging me to always look for the good in people and for brightening up any room into which you walk. You make the world a much better place for me, our children, and everyone with whom you make contact. And also I think you'll be very relieved that I think the new job probably means I need to be a bit more under control watching footy games. <laughs> to my colleagues on the bench, I want to thank each and every one of you for the incredibly kind and generous welcome that has been extended to me and my family. It has meant a great deal to all of us. I've been overwhelmed by the encouragement and words of support that I've received from each one of you, and I'll do my very best to serve the court to the best of my ability. I'm very happy, excited and humbled to be joining your ranks as a colleague. Thank you, Chief Justice. And, of course, we have morning tea outside for those who can join us and aren't in a rush to get back and look at 1998 Queensland reports. <laughs> uh, let the proceedings be recorded. Adjourn the court. Silence all rise. The court is adjourned.